In the fall of 2020, my family and I had to evacuate from our home because of the forest fires that were bearing down on California at the time. Thankfully, we had earned enough frequent flyer miles that we were going to be able to go and visit some family in the meantime while we waited for the fires to die down. I remember going out of our house with our kids and into the air that was unbreathable. Uh, the smoke really had landed on us and you couldn't see much less breathe. Thankfully, though, of course, we had plenty of uh, masks, face masks handy because we were living through a global pandemic uh, and a lockdown where all of us had become habituated to wearing masks. We got in the car, jumped on the highway, and uh, driving through LA, it was eerily empty, all of the highways. And I remember driving and the ash falling on our windshield. We got off the highway, and as we approached the airport, there were demonstrators that were gathering on the street to protest violence uh, against black and brown bodies that was representative of the racial reckoning that our country and the whole world was going through. We got on the plane, uh, headed out of state, and landed at our family's house. And as 2020 would have it, um, we thought we were going to experience some respite, some relief. But instead, we landed in a context where we had recently discovered a tragedy to our extended family that hovered over all of the things that we were doing while we were there. We were escaping an ecological crisis uh, in the midst of a biological crisis all while a racial reckoning was happening, and then we land in an interpersonal crisis. It seemed like it was just crisis after catastrophe, after chaos. It was almost unbearable, I remember. And in an email exchange with a colleague and a friend of mine who happens to be a psychologist, I remember her asking me, Cutter, how are you doing? <laughs> and I stopped for a second and I thought to myself, how am I doing? How am I, the, the theologian, the father, the friend, the scholar, the colleague, how am I doing? It's such a simple question, but in that moment when she asked it, I realized that despite my years of ministry experience, despite my multiple theological degrees, uh, despite all of the research and writing I had done, I was not equipped to even ask that question, much less answer it. But the truth of the matter is, my story is not unique. Everyone right now is encountering a time in which they're trying to navigate all sorts of upheavals of various kinds. Whether you are a pastor, a ministry leader, uh, leading an NGO or some other nonprofit, you're not only having to navigate these various traumas and crises on your own, but you're also tasked with the responsibility of helping others do the same. Sometimes it may feel like it's all that you can do just to make it through the day. The reason that these resources we've put together exist is to help you do more than just survive from one day to the next. By drawing upon the best of the psychological sciences, our hope is that by watching this series, you might have a few tools that'll enable you not just to survive, but to actually thrive in your ministry. But a word of warning, the primary tool that we're gonna be examining and exploring is you, the theologian, the ministry leader, the pastor, the person of faith in the world. We'll be covering a variety of subdisciplines within psychology, but the primary through line with this entire series is this. You are a body, and you are a member of a larger body that's composed of other bodies. So to be able to effectively lead other bodies in and through the various upheavals that they're going through, you have to develop a deeper and more robust understanding, not only of how you think, feel, and behave as an embodied human being, but also how other people think, feel, and behave in their bodies, so that ultimately you will be able to lead them more effectively, love them more compassionately, and show them the kind of empathy that's required of Christian leadership in the world. When I was boarding that plane to evacuate from the forest fires with my daughters, I was told by the flight attendant what every adult who travels with children is told. If the oxygen masks fall from up above, then you need to put on your oxygen mask first before reaching out and helping the children that are traveling with you. It's not just a metaphor, it's just true. For us to be able to help others in our midst, we have to first be able to know how we should thrive as the living, breathing, embodied human beings that we are. It's a principle that we accept full and fine and well on an airplane, 
but it's something that we sometimes struggle to apply in other domains of life. So these resources exist to help you do just that, to develop a more robust understanding of yourself as a fully embodied psychological human being, so that in turn, you can walk alongside other human beings in a way that will allow them and yourself not merely to survive, but to thrive.